Hi everyone, this is Professor Dan at the University of Colorado, and we are going to make a nightlight. Um, so if you're just joining us, we went through a couple different um, iterations of the uh, Tinkercad. So we started with just getting excuse me, getting started with Tinkercad. Then we went through how to blink an LED. And now we are going to try to build a nightlight. So a little bit more, um, a little bit more code. And so one thing I'd like to do is probably clean things up a little bit. So I'm gonna take our stuff and I'm gonna move it around our breadboard so that we can have a little better, um, little neater, Little neater display. There we go. So I'm going to take this. So the goal here is to make a little nightlight. What that means is when it's dark, I want the nightlight on, and when it's light, I want the nightlight off. So some of you are saying, could you couldn't you do that with just that circuit? Um, I could. I could. I could play around with a little circuit here and have it you know have it turn on with more radiance um, if i play around with this circuit a little bit but i want to use the power of arduino and so i want this to be an illustrative example and so how are we going to do that well we have our same photoresistor and now that i've moved stuff it's always good to test it so i'm going to start our simulation start simulation we're going to go to code oh and look i messed something up Start simulation, what did I do? I have the adjacent row issue, look at that. So if I click on that and just bring it up a row, there we go. That's why you always test. You always wanna make sure that if you're moving something, if you're adjusting something, you always wanna test it. So there we go. So when it's about half dark, I wanna turn on an LED. What does that look like? Well, I'm gonna stop the simulation. If I know I wanna turn on an LED, what I want to do is turn on an LED. That means I need an LED, and every LED should come with a resistor. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this up top. And before I even worry about um, anything else, I'm going to test my LED. So I have my anode and my cathode. And then I have my resistor, oops, it's not actually on the breadboard there. There we go. And in our kits, we have 330 ohm resistors. So I'm gonna double click on this and give myself a 330 ohm, orange, orange, brown. There we go. All right. So now, if I just wanna blink this thing, what I'll do is I'll comment out my other code we know that code works. What I want to do is say pin mode, and then the pin that's good is 13. And that is an output, power's coming out to turn on lights. And now in my loop, I want to say the command to turn on a light is digital, not read, but write. And then 13 high delay. Let's do a second digital right 13, comma low, and delay SFA. So, what I want to do is just test out, make sure that that light is lighting up. So, I hit start simulation, lights up. Good to go. So now I want to bring my bring my line over. There we go. Green's fine. And then I want to go to ground. And I like black. And actually, since I have a green wire down here, I might as well have a yellow wire. Why not? So there we go. And now we'll test out this light here. And so one of the things that I like about Arduino is you can um, isolate your circuits and combine with code. So I could build a whole circuit, not using Arduino, and um, make a nightlight. 
Sure. But the nice part about Arduino is we can isolate our circuit. So I build this one all the way up top. I build this one all the way down low. This is my light that's turning on, and this is my light sensor um, that's giving me readings. And I really isolate those circuits, and then I combine with a code. So I'm going to hit Start Simulation, and then I can see my LED is working. Cool. And so when I undo this, I do start simulation, hit clear. So now, because I have a delay, it's only taking readings very slowly. So after one second, after every 1.5 seconds, because it waits a second, blinks it, and then takes a reading. So what I actually want to do is I want to have my pin mode 13. That's still an output. My A0 is taking readings. But basically, I want to turn my light on and off based off of the reading. What's my, what's my word that represents a reading? It's this variable light read. And that's the nice thing about variables. Once you assign it, we for every subsequent instruction, this light read doesn't change. This analog read, if we put that into serial print line, or if we started just doing analog reads, that's gonna change very quickly and can provide really weird things with your code. But once we assign a variable to it, it says whatever reading it was, that light read now represents that value. So yeah, we'll print it out. And now let's do an if statement. If light read, is greater than 500, that means, anybody remember? Means it's dark. So what I like to do, if it's dark, is turn on a light. Else, I always like to digital light. I always like to tell Arduino to turn off the light. All right, so let's try it out. Here we go. Light is on. Let's play around with this thing. Oh, light is off. Light is on. Light is off. All right, but it's really finicky up above, call it 500. So I'm going to stop my simulation. I'm going to change this to. 100 so we can really play around with that more and that's how this light sensor is a little different than the one we were playing around with in class so still above 100 oh here we go on off on off cool stop simulation now what if i didn't have this digital right low when i do start simulation Light reading is greater than 100. I go low, and we don't actually tell it to turn off. So it's not optimal. But yeah, it's why Arduino is like playing with a little kid. It's really um, responsive to all of your commands, but you have to make sure you're giving it the appropriate command, saying not just turn on, but also turn off. So there we go, little night light just like that. In my next video, we will be doing some of the other advanced things uh, from that workshop. So we're going to hit